they were at. It is the fourth turning past the pub, not the third. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. We're down there on the left. You can reverse back. Thank you very much. I didn't think you were going to stop, Doctor. Your office misdirected me. Ah, oh, sorry about that, sir. Just the point of impact? Well, it seems like it. Ah, oh, some headlamp glass. And plenty of blood about, in spite of the rain. Yes. That appears to be the vehicle responsible. to one of the probation officers, name of Davis Jones. Oh. But, uh... Where's the body? So far, we haven't found it. But I understood over the telephone that this was a hit and run in reverse. Normally, we find a body but no car. This time, we found a car but no body. Start over there, will I think we can assume that he or she was driving the car over that bridge and that whoever was hit was approximately where Ash is now. And then the car continued, presumably out of control, and walloped that tree. No skid marks on the road. So either the driver didn't see his victim or he didn't intend to stop. But three sets of tire marks here. So he went into that tree, he must have backed out, and then come back again. No, it's possible. After work. How much petrol is in the tank? Not much, about a gallon. Hmm. And heavy blood staining here. Would you like a drink, or is it too early for you? Well, it's much too early, thanks. Darling, will you? Oh, I'll make some coffee in a minute. When did you first notice your car was missing, Mr. Davis Jones? I didn't. Your office rang. That was the first I knew. Where's it normally kept? In a stable at the bottom of the drive. Locked? Well, there used to be a padlock, but the kids lost the keys. The car wasn't locked either? No. Darling, did you lock it? No. No. She never does. Where were the ignition keys? Uh, in the car, I'm afraid. Isn't that a little careless? <laughs> I am careless. And I prefer to trust people until they let me down. In any case, we have a highly neurotic poodle who barks her head off if she hears an apple fall off a tree. Did she bark last night? Frequently. She's on heat. I see. Any specific times? <laughs> well, about 10.30. I've just gone to bed. So you got up to look around? No. I thought it was that collie from the farm next door. You say you trust people until they let you down. Had you got anyone particular in mind? Well, not really. I mean, I'm dealing with delinquents all the time. It could have been anyone. Not necessarily connected with my work. Do any of the probationers know where you live? One or two, yes. Is that wise, do you think? 
Well, I've only got a look in the telephone book. But you haven't invited any of them back here? Yeah. Well, that's breaking the rules, isn't it? No, I don't think so. Anyway, I don't live by the rules. Who have you invited back lately that might know you keep a car, plus ignition keys, in an unlocked stable? Inspector, do you know, I think you're looking for an easy way out. Oh, come on now, darling. You know perfectly well who must have taken your car. I've warned you enough times. Who? Look, whoever took that car knocked someone down with it. At the very least, the victim is injured and in need of medical attention. At the worst, they could be dead. Amongst others, you might wish to eliminate a recidivist called Norman Hobson. Amongst others. That'll do for a start. Let's say from 9 o'clock last night to 6 o'clock this morning. I was at home. What were you doing? I went to bed half past nine. Wasn't feeling too good. What's the matter with you? It's chest. Emphysema. I've got two lobes missing this side. Mm -hmm. You've also got a lot of form, including two stretches for knocking off cars. Oh, yes, that's all behind me now. You were a coachman for that jewel snatch in Petty Bar. Well, yeah? I did my time for that. You like cars, don't you, Hobson? Can't get your hands off them, can you? I was at home, in bed. I know nothing about it. That's quite a fast wagon the probation office has got, isn't it? Plenty of room to stack things. Perfect for a job. Easy to nick. He never even bothered to lock it up, did he? No, look, I've been on the level for a year now. I've had enough. <laughs> I am sick. If I do another stretch, I shall snuff out. Do you think I'm mad? No. Just hard up. Let's have your shoes. What for? Oh, come on, old sport. You know the ropes. told you what it was all about, did he? <clears throat> I was at home in bed. I know nothing about it. Just been talking to your probation officer again. He seems to think quite a lot of you. Yes, well, did you ask him if I'm on the level? Because he knows, he'll tell you. He'd like to think so. In fact, he's not keen to push any charges for you pinching his car. I never went near his car. So we may decide to drop that one. Can't promise. But you see, you knocked someone down. It could well have been an accident. We must know who it is and where that person is. I'm not with you. Come on. It's just the other side of the railway bridge. You probably thought the road was clear. Which bridge? The railway bridge in Mill Lane. And a bloke was knocked down. No, I didn't say it was a bloke. Who? That's what we don't know. Do you? I told you I wasn't there. You're suddenly taking a lot of interest for a man who wasn't there. I'll take a statement now, shall I? You're getting no statement out of me, mate. Yes, the comparison tubes, please. They're ready. Oh, are they? Mm. Oh, uh, <clears throat> some soil samples. Right. That's all from the car. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Catch the accelerator pedal. From the clutch. From the brake. Passenger side front, that's in the rear of the car. Now, I'm sure you remember your particle size tables. I think so. Right, what's clay? Diameter of clay under point zero zero two mils. Sand? Point two to two mils. Now, that's thick sand. What about thin sand? I put my twos mixed up. It is point zero zero two to two. And gravel any size over that. Oh, I see you can manage by your own. Look out for humus. Right. And that goes for you too. Yes, I'll do that, sir. Hops and shoes. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Any news on the car yet? Yes, we have a look at these. Ah. Just compare these, eh? There. Front of the car. Taken on the spot by your people, and they show nothing whatsoever. Now. 
and I got the car to the garage, I photographed it again myself. And there, you can see, there, inside the main dent. You see, it's a crisscross pattern of abrasion in the paint surface. Well, it looks like a fabric. Yes, I think possibly it is. It just shows how careful you've got to be when you're photographing a reflective surface. Could you tell the type of fabric? Well, I think that very probably there's a hard synthetic thread running through there, the kind of thing you sometimes get in waterproof material. Sandra, uh, when you've got a minute, will you look through the yellow pages here and get onto the leading gents' outfitters and tailors in Leamington and ask them to send down books of patterns of waterproof material? Right. Now then, there's nothing very much else I can tell you, I'm afraid, except that possibly, possibly that pattern may have got a bit distorted on the impact. It'd be quite a blow to make that imprint. Hmm, possibly. So the car would have been travelling at some speed and the victim wearing a raincoat. Possibly. I have here a thread from the radiator of the car, and here, of course, we have the blood traces from the carpet at the back. So I may assume the driver put the body into the back before disposing of it. Well, it would explain why you found the car no body, presuming, of course, that this is human blood. Just a minute, darling. I shan't be long. So you think it's just a rash? Yes, that's all. I thought we might be in for another outbreak of measles. No. I was wondering if you and John would like to come to dinner tonight. Oh, well, I'm afraid that I'm on call tonight. Um, tomorrow, then? You know, actually, it's our turn. Oh, that doesn't matter. Um, I'd like to try my weird vest on you. You mean Tony feels like another argument with John? Well, actually, it was his idea. Well, I'd love to, but I'm afraid John's likely to be working late. Oh, it doesn't matter how late. Do try and come. All right. Lovely. Now, here's your prescription. But it'll be after nine. Oh, that's fine. Thanks. Well, um, I look forward to seeing you. Beth, I liked your booyah base last time. Oh, um, sorry. I'll do my, uh, cassoulet, then. <laughs> Splendid. About six gallons in the tank on Monday. Beth used it to take the children to school Tuesday, collecting the afternoons five miles each way is 20 miles. We went out to dinner on Tuesday night, that's another 30 miles. The car does just over 20 miles to the gallon. Might have been three gallons in the tank. Probably less. Beth used it for the shopping. On Sunday. You uh, don't take it to the office? No, bus. And you didn't use it last night? No, I was in the office till after 11. I had three reports to make out. So you reckon there was a couple of gallons in the tank, enough to drive between, say, 50, 60 miles? Come in. Well, it's impossible to tell where my wife's been using it. She never knows where she's been. A fingerprint search room have been on, sir. They've eliminated quite a few, as Mr. Davis Jones prints. Well, I take it you won't be needing me any longer, then? Uh, no, not for the moment, thanks very much. Thank you. There are quite a number of small prints, uh, female or juvenile, probably from wife and kids. They're working on them now. Also, two palm prints, two thumbs, two index fingers, and one full right hand. All match up with prints of the suspect supplied. And Norman Hobson, CRO number 127036, stroke 48. All contain sufficient detail for use in evidence. Thumb and index finger have a sequence of 18 ridge characteristics. One palm print has 20, and the last one's a classic. Has a sequence of all 32 ridge characteristics. Uh, these shoes, Doctor, I just wondered if you had any idea yet. Yeah, I'm afraid not. I've only ever got down to that grass verge and make another plaster cast myself. Your boys did that. It's no good. I'll let you know tomorrow. We can't keep Hobson alive till tomorrow. We can hold him on the fingerprints. Well, book him then, driving without the owner's consent. And? Uh, failing to report an accident? No, 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 no. People don't respond to chemical analysis like that. You can't put litmus paper in their mouths and say this is an acid person because he turns blue and this is an alkali person because he turns pink. It's merely what you think I should think. As a matter of fact, you're quite wrong. My husband enjoys being wrong. He's discovered he can only be stimulated to activity by creating a hostile environment. Yeah, and you enjoy pretending we're poor, darling. That's your stimulus. And a thousand a year, it's hardly pretense. That used to be your annual drinks bill. Well, this is very excellent brandy. It's the last of the crate. When this is gone, Beth's going to have to make parsnip wine, aren't you, darling? How's your father, Tony? Oh, stinking rich as ever. Still, I cut him off without a penny now. He keeps sending me cheques, pretending they're for the children, but I bounce them straight back at him. 
My husband is atoning for his years of extravagance. Not at all. I just don't intend to be dependent on the old bastard, that's all. Dependency worries you? Well, naturally. Dependency is corrupting to both parties in every case you can think of. Including mother and child? Quite possibly. It's probably what's wrong with society. Why we can never find individual freedom within it. Because everyone's got a man on his back. Uh, has one. Tony's been hung up on that theme ever since he read Sin by the Sailor to the Girls. <laughs> well, let me give you an extreme example. It's a pretty horrifying one, too. One of my probationers, call him Fred. In and out of prison for 20-odd years. In jail, he meets, call him Jock. Now, Jock is the father figure. He's tough, self-reliant, looking for a neophyte, a fag. Prison is exactly like a public school. Oh, now we get to the bottom of it. I'm really reacting against your public school. Oh, hang on. Fred comes out of jail, commits some minor misdemeanor. The beak decides to put him under my care, give him one more chance. As soon as I hear about Jock, I know the case is hopeless. Because sooner or later, Jock's going to come out of jail, climb on his back again. And any single thing that he asks Fred to do, he will do. You said this is a typical case. Well, as a matter of fact, it's an actual case. But I'd be right in assuming that it is the subject of a police inquiry at this moment. Yes. And I'm hard in a position to comment. Yeah, it was a most delightful evening. You're not going already, boy, are you? We both have to be up early. May I suggest that you telephone Inspector Fleming in the morning? Fred is a very sick man. If he does any more time, I'd be condemning him to death in jail. You want me to do that for you? Oh, John. If I get a reputation for being a copper's narc, no man on probation's ever going to trust me. And without trust, I can't do my job. If I may say so, that is your problem. Good night, Beth. Um, good night. Now, can we have the little fellow out without disturbing your readings? Yes, it's settled and I've got the scale. And what does that tell you? We've got quite a lot more to do yet. Now, that is gravel. I think it is what is known as... Uh, pea gravel. But as uh, Davis Jones has a gravel drive, it could equally well have come from there. On the other hand, if Sandra finds any silt, then you may have to start dragging the ponds. When did you last see Davis Jones? Yesterday, why? Oh, nothing. It was just that his wife invited Joe and myself to dinner last night. Oh, really? Mm, I think it might be a good idea if you talk to him again. What exactly does that mean, Doctor? I think it's possible he might like to discuss the case with you further. Hello, Norman. I don't think I'd see you again. Why not? Just didn't, that's all. Because you think you let me down? How are they treating you, anyway? Same as ever. Has the prison doctor been to see you? He's poked me about a bit, yes. Oh, what did he say? Nothing I didn't already know. Mm. Why don't you sit down? What are they charging you with, Norman? Well, you should know that. Why should I? You work with the law, don't you? With the law, but not for them. Oh, no. And how come they dropped on me so fast? Well, whenever a job's been pulled, they go to all the old cons. First of all, you should know that. Yeah. Perhaps I'm wrong, but I... I had a feeling you were beginning to trust me. Oh, you're protecting your own handmate, same as everyone does. I came here to try and help you. Good. Got any tobacco? You shouldn't smoke with your chest. I'm not smoking. I'm trying to make a few more. You're setting yourself up as a baron, are you? Well, in here, some chance it's all sewn up. Well, I'll drop in and see your wife. See if there's anything she needs. Yes, do that. There's nothing else you want to tell me. <coughs> you know, Tony, I'm beginning to think you're really a very smart operator indeed. You're wasting your time outside. You can make a fortune in here. Right, old squire.
Your husband didn't tell you where he was going? As far as I knew, he was going to his office. Well, he hasn't shown up there. Then I'm sorry. I can't help. How often did Hobson call here? Three or four times. At your husband's invitation? To start with. My husband invited him to dinner. He brought his wife along. Really? I know it sounds naive, but he wanted him to feel he was part of society again. You don't sound as though you share your husband's sense of dedication. Well, in a way, I admire it. Only I have to think about the children. Anyway, after a while, I had to put my foot down. When was that? Last Sunday. We'd been away for the day, and we came back, and there was Hobson sitting in the kitchen. Now, how had he got in? Well, he said the back door was unbolted, but I'm sure I'd bolted it. I think he got in through the bathroom window. There was mud on the sill. Did he explain what he was doing there? Oh, he said he had an urgent problem to discuss with Tony. And he uh, felt faint and desperately needed a glass of water. How did you finally get rid of him? Tony drove him home. In your Volvo? Yes. So Hobson's been in that car recently? Yes. Well, I won't wait any longer, Mrs. Davis-Jones. Ask your husband to contact me as soon as possible. Thank you. I find him unspeakably tedious. You dislike him because he argues with you. No, I enjoy a good dispute, but not with somebody who wears his social conscience on his sleeve. Oh, John, that's unfair. You must remember that he has a tyrannical father who used to pack him off to boarding school simply to get rid of him. Altogether a bad background. Bad background? Oh, I, you mean Eden? You don't just find bad backgrounds in the slums, you know, John. You think he's a delinquent? Now, that's an interesting thought. So he takes a job looking after other delinquents. Chris Custodian, Zepsos Custodies. Excuse me. Here, Prince. Ah, thank you very much. And Inspector Fleming would like to know when he can have the results of the comparison of footprints. Well, tell him I'm not happy about them yet. No, no, I I'll tell him myself. Incidentally, did you find any silt? No. Oh, that'll please him. I don't have to drag the ponds after all. Yeah, it's his wife I feel sorry for. Well, she's used to a certain standard of living, having to give it all up just because he's developed a social conscience. Well, perhaps she finds that satisfying. Well, shall I become a missionary? Well, I think it might be rather good for you. Mm, too old. True. Yeah, come here. Now, what do you say to those, eh? Oh, yes. yes. Looks like the same weave. Yes. What about the material? Well, there, we've got fibre. And it's the same material as that, or very similar. Oh, yes. You know, it's funny. I'm sure I've seen someone wearing that pattern. Just tell me what you told Dr. Hardy last night. I was illustrating an argument. And illustrate it to me. Some of it was guesswork the on guess my part. The guess in my hearing. All I know is that Hobson's had someone round his neck for years. Another convict? Yes. Go on. Last Sunday, he made contact with Hobson, who got worried and came to see me. And that's when you found Hobson in your kitchen. Inspector, if you intend to interrogate my wife in the future, I'd very much appreciate it if you wouldn't do it behind my back. We couldn't find you. As a result, you've got the story wrong. You could have told me your story any time within the last 48 hours, but you didn't. So let's have it now. You may be accustomed to shouting at ex-cons in that way, but you won't get any cooperation from me, so you drop the act. Because I know too much about the police and your methods. You've been in the probation service exactly two years. Since we're exchanging opinions, you might like to know the opinion of the senior probation officer for this area. I know it already. Thinks I'm a dilettante. He thinks you're a fool if you want the truth. But I get results, and that's why he doesn't give me the push. And your father's a JP. We'll let that pass. Hobson broke into your house on Sunday. Let's start again from there. He was in my house on his own admission for over an hour. There are quite a few valuable things in that house, Inspector. He didn't put his finger on one of them. I just want you to know that. I'll make a note of it. What's the name of this con? Jock Garvey. Did you say Jock Garvey? Yeah. He went over the wall. I take it you're aware that Jock Garvey escaped from Lincoln Prison with two other men on Saturday night. No, I didn't. It was in the papers on Monday morning. Well, I didn't see it in The Guardian. 
You mean to say you didn't hear this in the office or around the courts? I've been taking some leave this week. And Hobson didn't tell you? No, I understood from Hobson the man had been released quite normally. And what did Hobson want you to do? He wanted me to put Garvey up for a couple of days till he found somewhere else to live. Did you agree? No. That's very lucky for you, Mr. Davis Jones. Otherwise, I'd now be questioning you for harboring an escaped convict. Is that all you want to know? For the moment. Good. Right. Let's go down and see Hobson. Start all over again. Dr. Hardy would like to see you as soon as possible. That's the blood stains from the carpet at the back of the car. But it's human blood, all right. It's group B, and similar to the blood traces found at the scene of the crime. So I think we can assume that the corpse was carried in the back of the car. Right, now, these casts. Let us assume that that belongs to the victim and these to the driver. Now, your suspect has shoe size number 10, so it can't be these because his, these are smaller. Why do you assume? that those are the drivers? Because this one is a perfectly normal print, you can see. And this one is considerably deeper, as though it's carrying some sort of weight. As though the driver were carrying the victim? Very possibly. But I'm afraid I can't tell you much more about the victim, except that very probably he was wearing a raincoat of this sort of material. Retail price, 35 guineas. The price it for a raincoat? Yes, well, if you choose to look in at Robinson's, it's a very pricey shop, you will find the finished article. Or, alternatively, you can go in and see Mr. Davis Jones, as Joe seems to remember that he was wearing one recently. Really? Now, soil. Well, he's very much alive and kicking. Uh, first, the all from inside the car, the piece of gravel you saw before. Which I think comes from Davis Jones' gravel drive. Two, soil similar to this, found at the area of the crash. And three particles totally alien to the area. Yeah. That's rich with humus. It's really thick with microflora. It's almost black. Where do you think that might have come from, sir? Well, I'll have to check, but at a guess I'd say it was Fen Country. East Anglia? Well, north of Cambridge, south of Lincolnshire, it's all Fenland. Has Davis Jones been up there recently? I could check. Lincolnshire, you say? Hobson's friend escaped from Lincoln Jail on Saturday. Now oh, the man on his back. Tony's decided to resign. Why? Oh, I gather he had a bad time with Fleming today. And he confessed to me this afternoon that he's been getting badly out of his depth. But perhaps, after all, he's not cut out for the job. Well, are you sorry about it? Well, in a way, yes. It was a job that he enjoyed. Perhaps the only job he's ever enjoyed. Not that he ever did much before. But from a purely personal point of view, I shan't be sorry. Well, what does he plan to do? Oh, he doesn't know. I'm trying to persuade him to take a holiday. By the way, I am sorry about last night. Well, as a matter of fact, I thought John was rather rude, and I told him so later. Oh, no, he was quite right. Tony was just trying to unload his problem. As a matter of fact, I think it would be best if we just sold up and moved. Well, that's a bit drastic, isn't it? Tony's so stubborn. He's been warned and warned not to invite his charges home, but he thinks he knows best. Now I have horrid visions of a kind of bush telegraph around the underworld. If you want a soft touch when you get out, go to the Davis Jones's house and they'll all be turning up. I'm getting too nervous to go out. Well, has there been more than just that one? Oh, yes, two or three. Oh, the others were just kids, but well, one of them was a very nasty piece of work. And sometimes they ring in the night, and to be honest, it's been a bit of a nightmare. And Tony allows this? Well, he gets cross with them if they ring in the night, but then they spin him a hard luck story, and he believes it. Well, in that case, I think it's time he did get out. Thanks. Underneath all that bravado, I think he's as scared as I am. Mm. Certainly so at the moment. He really seems to be frightened out of his wits. You haven't got a snout on you, have you? When did Garvey contact you? Where from and where is he now? Give me the answer to those three questions. We might even get you out of here. I know nothing about it. I can't make you out. You're already on two charges, not to mention breaking the terms of your probation order. 
By the end of the week, there might be a third charge, a lifer. I'm offering to get you off the lot. Oh, yeah. I've just told you. Look, what you mean is that you've finally twigged that I never nicked that car. Don't jump to too many conclusions. So you're trying to swing another charge on me, like helping an escape con, right, Squire? I never said anything about you helping, Garvey. I was at home with my wife and kids all night. Did you tell Jock Garvey where Davis Jones lived? I was at home all night with my wife and kids. a fast station wagon in an unlocked station. I was at home all night with my wife and kids. Cut it out. Garvey's on the run. A car with keys in it, just what he needed. Oh, he found his dubs on it, then, haven't he? He'd have been smart enough to wear gloves. It would be found yours. And you don't think I'd have been that smart? You were in that car on Sunday, so we'd expect to find yours. Oh, come on, now make your mind up, Squire. I did saying Jock Garvey nicked that car, or I did. I'm saying you both did. You told him where to find it, and you were both in it when you hit someone. You're guessing, Squire. Don't try and be clever. Well, I can always tell when a copper's guessing. All right. Have it your own way. You stand for the lot. Don't suppose you've got any snout on you, have you? And a light. Won't get better while you're here, you know, Norman. What's it to you? You don't have to take the rap for Jock Garvey. What's he got on you? I don't grasp on anyone. It's my pride. Got it? You sure it's pride? Not fear? Uh, the, um, bathroom window, sir. It looks as if the catch has been forced. Your inspector knows about that. My wife has a theory that Hobson got in that way on Sunday. Then he could have done it again. Or told a friend of his it was an easy way in. Sergeant, get it out of your head that this house has been robbed. Because it hasn't. You've checked there's nothing missing. Well, I haven't taken an inventory, if that's what you mean. Then you can't be sure, can you, sir? How about jewellery? Um... I can't find a pair of earrings. Darling, you know I can find your earrings. You know, I don't imagine an escaped convict's going to be wild to find your earrings. He'd be interested in anything he could sell. Well, then there's a dozen things in this room alone of far greater value. But not so portable. How about food? Food? He'd been on the run since Saturday night. He was probably hungry. A man on the run tends to feed himself first, then look around for what he can steal. Um, well, don't ask me to search my food cupboards because I haven't a clue what's in them. We're both rather untidy people, as I'm sure you've noticed. He'd also need clothing. Could you check your suits, coats, shoes? Sergeant, you've no evidence at all that this man has been anywhere near the place. Sir. Do you have a raincoat of this material, sir? Hmm. I did have, yeah. Where's it now? I gave it away. Who to? Hobson. You're quite sure it was Hobson? Yes. He didn't have a coat. Was he wearing it last time you saw him? No. Not as far as I remember. It's not in Hobson's flat? No. What does Mrs. say? Oh, she remembers he was given a coat. But she doesn't know where it is now, and she can't remember when he last wore it. He's got her well trained. Nothing to say. It is the same coat, of course. No. On the other hand, it's a bit too much of a coincidence that it's suddenly missing. You could have flogged it or pawned it. Mm -hmm. But if it was the same coat, you'll be back to square one. Ring the prison governor and tell him we're on our way down again. I flogged it. Who to? Second-hand clothes shop. Which one? Oh, I can't remember the name. Where? Rum. When? Last week. How'd you go? Bus or train? Bus. How much was the ticket? About five bob, I Hasn't think. Hasn't been five bob for years. Sergeant, you gave that coat to Jock Garvey. I haven't seen Jock Garvey. You saw Jock Garvey on Sunday and you gave him that coat. 
He wanted a car, you told him where to get one, you nicked the probation officers, drove it to meet Garvey and then knocked him down with it. <laughs> you know, it's a different version from the one you gave me last time you were I'm here. giving you one more chance to tell me it was an accident. You're guessing again, Squire. Oh, we'll have the other version. You hit him deliberately, you're trying to get him off your back. Not your week, is it? Right, sir. I think you have checked the times of the trains in this sector. Uh, yes, sir. There's not one due for another 32 minutes. Trains seldom run when they are due. Well, we have a man in the signal box, sir. Good. I should hate to be carried away on the 940 from Warwick. Just like to make sure. All right. All right. Okay. Third of foot. Down one foot, please! Right. Right, hold it there! Then you didn't examine that bridge before. We examined the line underneath very thoroughly on the first day, but we found no blood traces. Oh, it did occur to you then that he might have been heaved over? Of course. I see. Well, if he put onto a passenger train, we'd have found him by now. So that leaves us with goods traffic. I'd say empty trucks. That's what we're going to find out now, sir. I see. So you have it all in hand. All you need to know from me is whether the traces of blood and the fibres I found on the bridge tally with the other specimens. Well, I'm going home. Thank you very much. Empty trucks, sir. But they leave them all over the place. Leave them sometimes in sidings for months. You'll have a devil of a job finding them. Yes, sir, I know. No, no, any... Yes, what time was this? I see. You don't have any idea of the destination, do you? Oh, that's fine. I'll we'll... we'll check them both. Thank you. Good strain passed under the bridge. Just about 11 o'clock that night. All empty trucks on the upline. What do they call the upline? Going south. I see, down. They suggest we try Pontypool or Crewe.
Officer! He's here! He's here! Either. I'll try him at home again. It's the raincoat, all right. Oh, really? And very good quality suit. You didn't get that in Lincoln Prison. Yeah, that. Yeah, Huntons. Davis Jones's <clears throat> tailor. Yes. Now, there remains those traces of strange soil on the Davis shoes Davis. of the driver. A colleague of mine says that he thinks yeah. they were picked up within a 20 mile radius of Ely. Excuse me a minute, Doctor. Yes. The Davis Joneses have gone on holiday. At least that's what the cleaning woman says. That's marvelous, isn't it? He's been obstructing us all the way along the line. Sticks his fat thumb into a problem he knows practically damn all about. Then we'll need his help. He says he's gone on holiday. Tell her to wait. I'm on my way down. And the raincoat, I see. And the suit. On Garvey's body. Yeah, I've forgotten I'd given that to Hobson some time ago. It's absurd that he should have wanted it. It wouldn't fit him. We were told you'd got on holiday. Just delivering Beth and the children to the station, that's all. I said some rather harsh things in your office the other day. It was bad and stupid of me. I was under some strain. It's the dependency thing. They transfer it to you. You become the father figure. With Hobson, it became quite terrifying. He managed to put every single one of his problems under me. <laughs> of course, you. He knows the kind of blackmail, really, but he was good at it. He was incredibly good at it. Of course. He's a con. Got to the point where. Beth was going to take the kids and leave me. So? Wednesday night, he told me Garvey was on the run. they would come to his flat, wanted to know what he should do. I told him, get rid of it. Why didn't you telephone us? I intended to. But only after I was quite certain that he'd got... Garvey on his way. I mean, I didn't want Hobson involved. Well, he'd go down for a long time. I know that'd be the end of him. There you are, however. About an hour later, he arrives at my office. Says he's managed to get Garvey out of his flat, but on the condition that I'd help him. He fixed the rendezvous point. By the bridge? Yeah, I had a feeling that I might just persuade Garvey to give himself up. So you went home, collected your car, and drove it to meet Garvey? Yep. Just you alone? Yeah. I told Hobson to go home, go to bed, and stay there. Was it an accident? Well, it would be easy for me to pretend that it was, but the truth is that when I got to that bridge and he wasn't there, I just had an immense feeling of relief. He wasn't there. So I put my foot hard down. 
I feel as if the car's on wings. And then a bit further up, he steps out of the trees, wearing my raincoat. Oh, I could have avoided it. But I didn't, I panicked, I suppose. I went straight at him. And afterwards? Oh, I put his body in the back of the car and drove back to the bridge. And then I saw this goods train coming, so... Well, it seemed like the easiest way out at that moment. And pointing the finger at Hobson, that was the easy way out, too. No, I just wanted to take the pressure off me for a bit, that's all. Give me time to get Beth and the kids away. Where are they now? Well, they're near Ely with Beth's parents. Shall we go? Yeah. You'll drop the charges against Hobson, won't you? Not for harboring an escaped prisoner. Snout, Tony. No. No, well, you see, I can get you some. It's a quid a packet, all right. <laughs> Anything you want in here, Tony. Just ask me. <laughs> <laughs> 